Hi there. Today I will show you how to make super capacitor electrodes. Now the first step you need to do is you prepare your charge collector, which is the component which is responsible for well collecting your charge, also providing a surface on which the electrode rests. So uh, you just use aluminum foil, which is readily available and works. So first thing you want to do is you want to etch it with some sort of solution, and what that would do it will um, it would sort of eat away and dissolve the top parts of the foil, which will create um, lots of small pits, small holes, small channels. All these improve the surface area, which help the electrode material adhere to the surface better. Also increases the surface area, which increases the performance. So uh, what I got here is a cup of my electrolyte solution. 100 milliliters of water, 2 teaspoons of Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate, and 2 teaspoons of table salt, which is sodium chloride. So, I'll just stir it for a sec, because uh, I won't stir it very well. So, you want to flatten your aluminum foil out, and after you're done stirring, you gently pour some of your solution onto the foil. Oop. Try not to let it spill over. Okay. Now you want that to sit for a while until the surface of the aluminum turns a dull gray. And w once it turns a dull gray, you're ready for the next step. So after five hours of waiting, the aluminum foil is done etching. I'm going to give you a close-up view. Let's see how this is the uncovered part of the aluminum. It's shiny aluminum. This is slightly dull gray, like a frosty layer. And so the problem is your salt solution is also slightly opaque. So to uh, distinguish between whether or not it's actually etched or whether or not it's just a salt, add some fresh water just to one side of the aluminum since you didn't cover the entire thing. And here. So I just added some extra water here. So this part wasn't etched, so you can see it's shiny. This part's gray. Now, if the grayness was due to salt, then it would spread here, but it's not, which means it's actually aluminum oxide layer, which means it's done etching. So what we'll need to do is uh, rub that layer off and we get our etched aluminum. But first, we need to make our electrode paint. So to do that, you need whatever material, material you're using for your electrode, like activated carbon, here's some graphene I made. I'm not using this because it's not enough, it's just a tiny layer floating on the surface. So for the purpose of demonstration, I'm just using regular powder carbon. I uh, made this by grinding wood char to a powder. So that's one component of your electrode paint, your, the electro material. Sorry, water running through pipes down in the basement. And next you need your uh, binder, which is sort of a glue that holds the material to bar apart after it's dried. This is a bit of pine resin. Uh, it, it's a bit unorthodox. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else use it, but I like it because it's not water soluble and also it's really really sticky. So there's a whole list of binders, all that, but I'm not going to discuss it in this video because I'm planning to make a video on conductive inks and paints. So watch that later if you want to know more about the binders I'm going to use. So the amount of binder you want to add is um one-ninth of the amount of electro material you have by volume. So this P little drop, um, it's one-ninth by volume of the electro material I have in here. The last component, the last essential co component is a carrier. Now since pine resin isn't uh, soluble in water, you can't use water as a carrier, so I'm using uh, isopropyl alcohol 
70% rubbing alcohol as a propyl. The other 30% is water, but uh, the alcohol component should dissolve the pine resin. So, um, I'm going to measure out a bit of this so I don't overfill it. And what you want to add to your electro material is just enough to cover it. So, pour this in. And yeah, I don't have much sophisticated equipment. Oh, I spilled it. No problem. Ah, it smells. So, I'm going to put my binder into my electro material. And I'm going to cover it with this solvent. And next, I mix. And since I, once again, don't have much sophisticated equipment, just use a paper clip. So, uh, after I'm done mixing, I'll show you what okay, I Okay, I'm done mis mixing the paint, and, um, what I get? Uh, yeah. It's, the resin is rather hard to dissolve, so next time I'll powder it to make it easier. So, okay, next step, you want to clean off the oxide layer off this foil. So I got here's a paper towel first to soak up the liquid. Give that some time. And there. Oh, I'll have to clean that up later. Next, uh, you got most of the liquid off, now you want to wipe that oxide layer off. So just Polish it until it comes up shiny again. And that's about it. So now you can see that that oxide is off. I've polished it flat. On that surface are microscopic, oh, tiny pits, uh, tiny holes, channels. Those all contribute to improving its surface area. So, curls up a little because I've been rubbing it. So now all you want to do is drop cast your paint onto your uh, collector. I'll do it this way. So. The isopropyl alcohol uh, spreads across the surface really, really quickly, so just be warned. You can see there's that dot, but around it, probably can't see on the cameras, all the alcohol just drained off. It spreads across the surface really quickly, like I said. So just keep on doing this till you got your electrode. Okay, that's all I'll do today. So, uh, all the alcohol remaining spread has spread off and evaporated. The remainder of that is the 30% water of the solution. So you let that dry for a while, and then you just cut out your electrode from this. Um, yeah, so this is how you make super capacitor electrodes. Thank you for watching.